gentlemen of the press, good evening and welcome to the reception in honor of the Court International Conference on the Safe School Declaration. My name is Zara Yevilua Minaje from the Office of the Spokesperson of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And I'm, it's my honor to serve as the anchor for this event this evening. To begin, we would like to recognize the presence of some very special guests in our midst. We are pleased to have with us the Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs and Chief Host of this event, His Excellency Geoffrey Onyema. You're welcome, sir. We also have with us the Honorable Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Her Excellency Dr. Zainab Ahmed. You're welcome, sir. We would also like to recognize the special envoy of the UK's Prime Minister on, Child, on, Child, on Girls' Education, Ms. Helen Grant, who will be joining us virtually later on to deliver the keynote address. Definitely not forgetting our co-host, we have the ambassadors of Argentina, Norway, Spain, representing their various countries. We also have the co-chair of the Global Coalition to Protect Education from Attack, GCPEA, representatives from the African Union also present. I would also like to recognize the members of the, various, of the diplomatic corps accredited here to Nigeria. We also acknowledge the presence of all delegates from the Ministry of Education, Ministry of Defense, and the various civil society organizations. You're all welcome. As you are aware, the government of Nigeria, together with governments of Argentina, Norway, Spain, African Union Commission, and the Global Coalition to Protect Education from Attack, is hosting the fourth international conference on the Safe Schools Declaration, with the theme, Ensuring Safe Education for All, from Commitment to Practice. So over the next couple of days, state and non-state actors, including our multilateral and civil society partners, will come together to exchange ideas, share experiences, and also present their strategies, progress, as well as challenges in making the promise of safe education for all into a reality. So this evening, we're all gathered here to officially welcome you all, and thank you for taking time out of your very busy schedules to be here with us in Abuja for this very important conference. So on that note, may I respectfully invite the chief host of the event, the Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs, His Excellency Geoffrey Onyema, to deliver his welcome address. Thank you, Excellency. Your Excellency, the Honourable Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, uh, Permanent Secretary uh, here uh, present of the Ministry of Education, Your uh, Excellencies, Heads of uh, Diplomatic and uh, Consular Missions and uh, International Organizations accredited to Nigeria, our distinguished delegates and uh, invited guests from across the world. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's a great, great, great pleasure uh, for me and for the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs to welcome you all here uh, this, uh, this evening. And uh, thank you all very much indeed for taking time off your busy schedule uh, to be here uh, with us uh, this, uh, this evening. Uh, it's been a long road to, uh, to this Abuja conference, but I'm delighted that we are finally here. And I want to welcome you all to Abuja, uh, the federal capital territory of Nigeria, particularly those of you who are visiting uh, for the very first time, and I know that some of you are visiting for the very first time. We are really delighted to have you uh, in our midst, uh, in our country. Nigeria, of course, is the largest, uh, most populous country uh, on the continent, and uh, predicted by in about 30 years' uh, time to become the third most populous country in the world after China and India. 
Um, I don't know whether that's something we can be proud about, but um, the Minister of Finance is here, and uh, she is going to have to start uh, budgeting for a much larger uh, population uh, in a few years uh, to come. Um, but we're also proud that this is the very first um, uh, country on the continent. We are the first uh, uh, country on this continent uh, to host the conference on Safe Schools uh, Declaration. And um, it's really uh, with great uh, uh, optimism, I recall, when we had the uh, pre-conference uh, briefing uh, event, which was organized in the Ministry uh, of um, Foreign Affairs in, in July, um, we're very optimistic that Nigeria could pull off uh, this event and, uh, and I'm really delighted that uh, it's come to pass and uh, that so far, so good. Um, I'm also uh, pleased that this is also an opportunity to uh, showcase uh, Nigeria uh, to the world and, um, and also uh, advertise our unflinching commitment to a robust and uninterrupted educational system. Nigeria, you know, um, we've been known for our education, and education plays a very important uh, role in our national development. And um, and this is one of the reasons why we are. Well, wow. <laughs> well. In Greek culture, you know, breaking plates at events is a sign of good luck. So, uh, <laughs> so we hope that this whole event will be crowned with uh, good luck and uh, good, uh, good fortune. Um, as I was saying, that education plays a very important role uh, for Nigeria and Nigerians, which is one of the main reasons why uh, we were very keen to host uh, this uh, this event. And, um, you know, Nigeria actually uh, subsidizes, to a certain extent, the, uh, a lot of um, the assistance. We actually provide assistance to a lot of industrialized countries because we educate a lot of young Nigerians here, and obviously the education we provide to them is extremely good because they all end up being snatched by all industrialized countries. So you go to the US, you go to Europe, most of the European countries, you go to the, the Gulf of countries, and you just see a lot of Nigerians graduating here and ending up in different fields, medical fields, as engineers, as lawyers, and, um, and those countries are getting the benefit of you know uh, what we as a country have invested uh, in our you know in our youth. And uh, so that also says a lot for uh, notwithstanding a lot of challenges that we face, but I think it also says a lot just about the, the, the quality of the education and um, not to talk about the affordability uh, of the education. So um, yes, we have this um, brain drain and uh, the challenge for us, of course, as government uh, is to try and turn that around uh, into brain gain and provide uh, the environment to keep more of our educated uh, uh, youth and those that are out there um, bringing them back. In fact, this, uh, this evening I met a, some very young Nigerians uh, from, from Belarus, you know, uh, that came to see me. And, um, you know, they just finished uh, here and, you know, we're, we're in Belarus and I was asking them that um, I hoped that they were going to come back you know, when they finish their studies. And, um, well, they said they would, but I, I really hope they, they will. But we have to also work hard to make, uh, provide the enabling environment uh, for our youth to, um, uh, to stay here in this country, uh, especially after the investment that we make in their education. But anyhow, uh, this is not really an evening for, um, for long speeches because um, I'm aware that most of you um, are probably tired after uh, long hours on the plane, and um, so we'll try and um, you know <laughs> keep it uh, short. But nevertheless, you will agree with me that um, we do need the right strategies and partnerships 
to guarantee that the Safe Schools Declaration will be adequately funded by government and the donor uh, uh, agencies. And, um, and I'm really happy that the Honorable Minister of uh, Finance, Budget and National Planning, Dr. Zainab uh, Shalshuna uh, Ahmed, that uh, she could join us this evening. And uh, she really deserves um, our gratitude because she only just came back uh, from a long trip uh, yesterday and spent uh, all today uh, in meetings, but nevertheless, uh, she has, um, you know, um, showed up this evening. Uh, we really appreciate you, uh, Honourable uh, Minister. Uh, but she will also have an opportunity to, um, to deliver a goodwill uh, a message, and, and I think she's in a better position than I am to talk about the issues of funding uh, with regards to uh, safe schools. The decision of the Federal Ministry of Education to host the 4th International Conference on Safe Schools Declaration, uh, of course, is the reason why uh, we're all here. And so um, we'll also be hearing from the Permanent uh, Secretary uh, of the uh, Ministry uh, of Education, uh, highlighting the importance of uh, uh, this conference in the context of increased attacks, unfortunately, uh, which we are seeing uh, on education. And um, you know, a few months ago, our president um, was in, in London uh, for the Partnership on Education uh, a summit that was held. And um, you know, we were shown a film uh, that um, really highlighted the uh, the real, very real um, uh, uh, challenges that schools are facing all around the world. And uh, it really was hard breaking and wrenching to see, you know, a lot of these young children being interviewed, um, you know, about after attacks uh, on their schools um, all around the world, and how nevertheless they're still tenacious and uh, to get education. So we really owe them um, this kind of event and owe them uh, all the effort and investment uh, we can make to provide a safe environment uh, for them to um, uh, to study, and uh, you know, speaking of partnerships, uh, of course, we've been uh, very very fortunate uh, to have partners like the Global Coalition uh, to Protect Education from uh, from Attack. Uh, they've been extremely supportive in the realization of uh, of this conference, making it uh, happen, and um, we're delighted uh, this evening uh, to have in our midst Ms. Uh, Zana Neff, uh, the co-chair of the Global Coalition to Protect Education uh, from Attack. She will also have an opportunity uh, to deliver a goodwill message to us. So thank you very much indeed uh, for, for your support. Uh, the education of our girls remains sacrosanct, uh, girls in particular, and that's why our keynote address this evening is centered on the importance of the Safe Schools Declaration in mitigating threats to girls' uh, education. And, um, you know, we will, in that context, uh, hopefully also have, I don't know if she's coming yet, uh, have the uh, UK Prime Minister's Special Envoy for Girls' Education, Ms. Uh, Helen Grant, uh, to drive home this, uh, this message uh, 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 to us. And uh, before I conclude, I want to especially uh, recognize uh, those countries that uh, have recently endorsed the Safe School uh, Declaration. Uh, we'll be very we will be welcoming them uh, more formally uh, during the course of this uh, uh, this evening uh, into the fold of endorsing countries, um, you know, later on, as I said. So I can assure you that the, the best of Nigerian hospitality and entertainment will also be uh, on display. Uh, you'll get uh, uh, it'll have to be a very small uh, sense uh, or taste of. Um, the richness uh, of Nigerian uh, culture uh, this uh, this evening to help you also relax and uh, get you in the mood uh, for the conference. And uh, to our foreign guests, please, um, you know, uh, make sure that uh, you also get to taste uh, some of our delicacies. Uh, Nigeria also is uh, very well known uh, in the culinary uh, department, and uh, so please uh, take advantage. Uh, of it, our jollof rice, world famous jollof rice, and other uh, delicacies. And hopefully this evening, we'll provide some of that uh, to you. But above all, we want you to, um, you know, it's uh, addressing a very serious uh, 
subject matter, uh, but at the same time, we also want you to uh, also enjoy yourselves. And um, uh, thank you once again for being here. Thank you. Also, please permit me to recognize the presence of the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Education, uh, architect Son Echuno. You're welcome, sir. Um, also, to kindly request that representatives of the new industrial states, that is Benin Republic, Croatia, Gambia, Morocco, and Senegal, we are kindly asking you to please come forward to the seats provided here for you. Thank you. So, on that note, we will now listen to a series of goodwill messages. And to kick that off, I have the honor to humbly invite the Honorable Minister of Finance. Budget and National Planning, Dr. Zainab Ahmed, to the stage for her message. Good evening, Excellencies, friends and all. Let me especially recognize my colleague, the Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs, and also the Permanent Secretary, Federal Minister of Education. I also need to recognize the Co-Chair of Global Coalition to Protect Education from attack. The UK Prime Minister Special Envoy for Girls Education. Other Prime Minister Secretaries that are here. Excellencies, dignitaries, foreign personnel, foreign nationals, and all special guests. Let me join my colleague to warmly welcome you, not only to this meet, uh, forum today, but also to Abuja, and hope that you will find time beyond the conference to visit with Abuja and enjoy the great hospitality of Nigerians. I wish to start by commending the efforts and the commitment of the governments of Argentina, Norway, Spain, the African Union Commission, and the Global Commission to Protect Education from Attack for supporting Nigeria in making the Safe Schools Declaration a reality. This international conference is the fourth in the series, in the series, but it is also the very first one that is hosted in Africa. And it is a pleasure for us that Nigeria has that opportunity and privilege. As you are all aware, there are up to 112 United Nations member states that have endorsed and expressed political commitment to ensure the safety of civilians and the general population and provide protection for education from attack. In Nigeria, the SSD ratification was signed by His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari on the 31st of December 2019, signaling the country's commitment to its implementation. The Ministry of Finance Budget and National Planning has taken proactive measure steps in consultation with national and international stakeholders with a view to charting a new course towards ensuring consistent financing to support education continuously even in times of conflict and also to provide support to the survivors of attack on the education system. A high-level forum was conducted by our ministry in April 2021 with the theme Financing Safe Schools, Creating Safe Learning Communities. The forum had representatives from federal ministries, departments and agencies at the federal as well as the state government levels we had state commissioners of part of, um, of education. We had all the security agencies. We had a very good representation of multilateral institutions and international donors participating in that April uh, conference. This development should give this forum the assurance that the Nigerian government is committed in providing adequate funding for the implementation of the Safe Schools Declaration Plan of Action. Following the increase 
in attacks on educational facilities globally, this has become necessary. And in Nigeria, we're working on a national plan that is setting out a three-year spending program for financing and creating safe learning in our country. I'd like to call on all stakeholders to be part of this initiative. There are very strong synergies that we need to create in tackling this menace on the educational sector. And the Nigerian government will not be able to do it alone. We need the cooperation of private sector participants, of our development partners and friends. Stakeholders should join us to take a stand to acknowledge the education emergency and to commit to taking action to reverse the current trend in the number of part of school children. There is no doubt that at various times and at various levels, there are programs supporting education organized by NGOs, by donor partners, and by other stakeholders. However, we need to harmonize all of these efforts and partner and work together bringing all relevant stakeholders to fight the same cause for effectiveness in delivery. I again need to urge all stakeholders to collaboratively develop funding strategies and make commitments to develop a roadmap to ensure a whole of society approach to creating safe learning communities that will encourage children to return to school. It is also expected that the private sector will play a vital role in supporting this laudable initiative. And I want to pause here to say that we have already seen some significant level of leadership in the private sector. We have a private sector working group under our Sustainable De Development Goals uh, project that have committed to and adopt a school strategy with a commitment to spend as much as 100 million naira per each school that is adopted, and the design to have is to have at least one school that is classified in this adoption strategy in each of the 774 local governments. On our part, we have engaged with the private sector, and they have made a request for us to look at fiscal incentives that will provide to them for undertaking this commitment and we're engaging on designing an appropriate fiscal incentive together with the private sector participants to encourage them to make this investment. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as policy makers, we're working to engineer policies across government, working with the heads of national security apparatus, working with donors and multilateral institutions to review the economic and the social impact of the insecurity on education. And I must also say that some work has already been done in this regard. There is an assessment that has been conducted by UNICEF, and I'm sure UNICEF will, during the course of this uh, conference, provide the report of that assessment. This assessment is going to help us to show a clearer picture of where we are, and the plan of how to effectively ensure that we protect the educational system in our country. In conclusion, I want to reiterate that the Ministry of Finance Budget and National Planning is looking inwards to ensure funding is provided through budgetary allocations, and also committing to facilitate the allocation of funds in all relevant ministries, departments, and agencies during the budgetary process for providing safe learning communities. States and local governments are also being encouraged to make similar budgetary allocations in creating safe learning communities for students, for teachers, and also for us to be able to rebuild confidence in the education system. We also intend to explore other sources of funding through donor partners, civil society organizations, who are friends and partners at bridging the financing gap that we know exists. This has become necessary and it is important 
for us to do this, to emphasize the role that education must play in every developing economy. Education raises the productivity of our people. It also brings out the creativity in our people, the entrepreneurial, uh, the entrepreneurial skills as well as the technological skills in our people. It plays a crucial role in securing economic and social progress and also in, in improving income distribution. I look forward to a successful conference and I want to assure you of our commitment in ensuring that funding is provided by government for the implementation of the outcomes of the summit and also I want to urge our partners and friends to support us in this regard. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Um, next, please, may I respectfully invite the Permanent Secretary of the Federal Ministry of Education, Architect Sonny Fetchano, to give his usual message. His Excellency, our Minister of Foreign Affairs, <laughs> our Excellency, the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, our partners, and I will be recognizing them in due course, very esteemed delegates to the Fourth International Conference, the Safe Schools Declaration, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I bring you very warm felicitations from Madam Adamu Adamu, the Honorable Minister of Education of Nigeria, and the entire education family. We are happy to welcome you to our capital city, Abuja. Indeed, your presence has further demonstrated your unwavering commitment to the Safe Schools Declaration. Nigeria appreciates the privilege of co hosting this fourth international conference on Safe Schools Declaration with the African Union Commission, the governments of Argentina, Norway, and Spain as well as the Cuba Coalition to Protect Education from Attack. This is a defining milestone in our efforts to ensure that the implementation of the content of the Safe Schools Declaration receives needed impetus. Permit me to acknowledge and appreciate the great work by Spain, Argentina, and especially Norway, who championed this declaration that provides countries the opportunity to express political support and commitment to the protection of students, teachers, schools, and universities during times of armed conflict. The theme of this conference, ensuring safe education for all, from commitment to practice, is timely as it underscores the need for every member state of the United Nations to meet its obligations under the Safe Schools Declaration and to take further steps in ensuring effective implementation of initiatives that guarantee the safety of learners and teachers in our schools. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, over the years, Nigeria has witnessed incessant attacks on its education and its facilities, causing severe and long-lasting harm to our learners and the larger society. As you are aware, education is fundamental to development and to the full enjoyment of human rights and freedoms. The government of Nigeria is not unmindful of this fact and has taken far-reaching measures to address the situation, including care and justice for victims as you become aware in the next couple of days. Today, we started off very well with the civil society components of the conference, and we had both heart-wrenching accounts or experiences, as well as the silver linings, a few success stories of survivors of attack who still persevered and went on to make something meaning of their lives by acquiring education in other countries and even in other states within our country. It is imperative that governments across the world take concerted and sustained efforts to ensure that our schools are safe and secure 
to achieve the existential goals of education. Permit me to further restate that Nigeria remains committed to the Safe Schools Declaration and its guidelines to safeguard our education. We have since implemented the prohibition of our schools from being converted to or utilized for military purposes. We are also waging war against criminal elements, bandits and insurgents who see our schools as soft targets for kidnapping and arson. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for honoring Nigeria with your presence at this conference, which is the first of its kind on the African continent, and for making extra efforts to be at this welcome reception. I thank the Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs for acting as the chief host and for all the contacts that have been made in bringing everybody together for this conference. If there be anything you can do to our esteemed delegates to make your stay even more rewarding, kindly contact any of our organizers who will be happy to provide me an assistance. I wish you all a very memorable stay in Abuja and thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Next, we'll make any request that the co-chair of the Global Coalition to Protect Education from Attack, GCBEA, Ms. Zama Neff, comes to the stage to deliver her video message. Good evening. Your Excellency, Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs, Your Excellency, Honorable Minister of Finance, Budgeting, and Planning. Your Excellency, Honorable Minister of State and Permanent Secretary of the Federal Ministry of Education, and submissions in Abuja and delegates of the Fourth International Safe Schools Conference. It is an enormous pleasure to be with you here today on behalf of the Global Coalition to Protect the Education of the Tech, a unique coalition of NGOs and UN agencies advocating for safe education for more than a decade. It's also a long way from rural Afghanistan, where I first had a child tell me about finding a grenade under her teacher's chair, where I first had teachers pull out of their pockets threatening letters, so-called night letters, threatening to kill them if they persisted in continuing with rural education. So while this is the fourth day schools conference that I've attended, it is unique in several ways. This is, as we heard, the first conference held on the African continent. Nigeria and its neighboring countries are deeply impacted by attacks on education. Too many of their boys and girls are suffering the loss of their education and being abducted and killed, all for exercising their fundamental, life-saving right to education. For the first time, the conference gathers in a hybrid format, in Abuja and virtual. This new approach allows global engagement and critical discussions, including by those most effective students and teachers, like Joy, Daisy, Ahmed, and Paola, who we heard from today. Students from Nigeria, Colombia, Syria, students who said it should not be normal to find bullet casings in their schoolyard. Another development that sets Abuja apart is that the overwhelming majority of countries have now signed the Safe Schools Declaration. We also have over six years of experience in implementing the Declaration and a solid body of good practice showing that change is possible and change is happening now. Just one example, Nigeria's national policy for safety, security, and violence free schools. And the Global Coalition has just released a report listing good practice examples from 57 countries. It is a roadmap to truly move from commitment to practice theme of this conference. Through the hard work and commitments from states and civil society, the Safe Schools Declaration is making a difference. It is saving lives and is protecting the right to education in some of the most dangerous places on earth. For example, over a dozen countries have revised their laws or military guidance to reflect their commitments. According to the Global Coalition's research among countries that endorsed the Declaration in the first two years, the military use of schools and universities declined by over half from 2015 to 2020. Think about all of those young people who no longer face soldiers and guns in their classrooms, who do not have to risk child recruitment, sexual violence, or even being killed by retaliatory fire. This 
Despite the enormous progress being made, however, there is still much to be done. Globally, attacks on education rose by one-third in 2020, according to our data compared with the previous year. And this is in the context of a global pandemic that has disrupted the education of 1.4 billion children, where schools have stood vacant and vulnerable to use by war parties. This is why this conference is so important. We need to roll up our sleeves to work even harder to learn from each other, to work together to mobilize others to join us, to demand accountability for our tactics. This is how we can fully realize the transformative potential of the Safe Schools Declaration, a world in which students and teachers can study and teach safely, no matter where they are. On behalf of the Global Coalition to Protect Education from Attack, I thank you for joining us in the global movement to achieve this vision. And I very much look forward to being with you here over the next few days in Georgia. Thank you. At this point, it's my pleasure and honor to introduce and welcome the next speaker who will be joining us virtually to deliver her keynote address. That is the UK Prime Minister's Special Envoy for Girls' Education, Ms. Karen Grant. I especially want to thank the government of Nigeria and the Global Coalition to Protect Education from Attack. I'm hugely honoured to be the UK Prime Minister's Special Envoy for Girls' Education. My role is to globally champion his message that providing 12 years of quality education for every single girl on the planet is one of the best ways of tackling many of the problems facing the world today. And this is especially true when education is under attack. Education is a human right, and it's also key in building stable communities, greater understanding, and equal opportunities. And yet, between 2015 and 2019, there were more than 11,000 attacks on education, harming over 22,000 students and educators in 92 different countries. We also know that attacks on education have a disproportionate impact on girls. Girls who live in conflict zones are two and a half times more likely to be out of school than girls who do not. Out of school girls are at greater risk of violence, sexual abuse, forced marriage, early marriage, FGM, and human trafficking. The mass school closures due to COVID-19 unfortunately made a difficult situation even worse. All of this is creating a very real risk of a lost generation of girls. And we must work hard and we must work together to stop this from happening. Through the UK's commitment to the Safe Schools Declaration, we're supporting children affected by conflict and crisis to get back into school. The Declaration is absolutely vital in helping communities to get back on track, facilitate reconstruction, and re-establish schools as safe places for our children to learn. I'm delighted that 112 states are signed up to the Declaration. This is a fantastic achievement. But we would encourage all states to sign and endorse this important Declaration. Implementation is also key, and it must be gender responsive. Here in the UK, we have embarked on this implementation journey. Firstly, by situating the Safe Schools Declaration within our girls' education campaign, we are making sure that implementation is gender responsive. Secondly, the Ministry of Defence, through its human security policy, are making sure that protection of children and the six grave violations, including attacks on schools, 
as fully considered as part of military operations. We also deliver a human security course which includes training on how to prevent, react and respond to grave violations. Ensuring our children fulfil their right to an education is a key priority for the UK government. Earlier this year, our Prime Minister Boris Johnson announced £430 million of pledge to the Global Partnership for Education. This will help up to 175 million more children to learn. We're very proud to be the GPE's leading bilateral donor, where approximately 75% of funds goes directly to fragile and conflict-affected states. We're also the largest donor to Education Cannot Wait, which provides emergency and long-term support to ensure that education continues in times of crisis. The international community must work together to make sure ECW is fully resourced. Predictable, multi-year funding is crucial for long-term planning and action. <clears throat> but of course, there's always more to be done. And this very special conference is a major opportunity to advance the protection of education on the global agenda. We have the means through the Safe Schools Declaration to work together to better protect our children, supporting their return to school, ensuring they have the right to education. And we must make good on our commitment. The challenge with education, I know, is significant. But our ability to make change in the world, if we work together, should never be underestimated. Thank you very much. Zambia, Morocco, and Senegal for recognition by Tony Ponyi. So, um, the only two of those countries mentioned that are actually represented here uh, this evening. But um, welcome to the club. Bienvenue. Je vais vous donner une occasion de. Hello. Pour dire quelques mots, euh, pour moi, pour dire que vous êtes très content d'être parmi nous euh, maintenant et tout ce que vous voulez dire. Okay? Donc, bienvenue. Salut. Good evening. Uh, first of all, I'm, I'd like to say on behalf of uh, the Gambia High Commissioner, uh, who is unavoidably uh, absent here, I want to, first of all, uh, thank Minister of Foreign Affairs, and also want to thank the Honorable Minister of Finance and also the Permanent Secretary of the Federal Ministry of Education. And uh, on behalf of the government of Uganda, we want to thank you very much for uh, inviting us here to witness for this uh, reception. It is very important because the government of Uganda has such importance for education. And uh, I can also say it here that the current budget, which the foreign uh, the, uh, excellency has tried to say, the commitment of the government of the budget is concerned. I can also confidently say here that the government of the Gambia has increased the budget of uh, the Ministry of Education. Given that, we as a member who we have signed to this same school declaration. And currently, they have a special committee that is working to see that all schools, being uh, uh, private schools, nursery schools, being tertiary institutions like universities, are all protected and also fully uh, funded in order for uh, people to go to school uh, in a very safe environment. And, uh, we are very glad uh, because we know that as a small country like Gambia, education is the way forward as far as economic development is concerned. Uh, on behalf 
of the government of the Gambia want to once again thank the Federal Republic of Nigeria uh, for this invitation uh, and also the organization recognizing the important role that Gambia can play as far as uh, safe school and declaration is concerned. And we can also say here, we are very committed to ensure that uh, education institutions are protected and also to ensure that children go to school in a very safe environment. On behalf of the government of the Gambia, I want to once again thank you all uh, for welcoming us to this important institution. Thank you very much. Honorable ministers, your excellencies, ambassadors, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, first of all, let me thank the organizers of the Fourth International Conference on the Safe Schools Declaration, and specifically the government of Nigeria, the co-hosts of Argentina, Norway, and Spain, and all other supporting countries, especially the countries that just joined, we saw, so the uh, Benin Republic, and the Gambia, for all being here. We thank, of course, JCTA. They made a remarkable effort to gather us today and over the next days, here and virtually all over the world, despite all the challenges of a still ongoing pandemic. The government of Italy shares their goal to make this three days event the occasion to make important progress on an issue that concerns us all. The commitment of our government to the safety of schools and children worldwide will be reaffirmed by our Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Marina Sereni, in a video that will be shared, will be aired shortly. And to have virtual participation to one of the panels Wednesday. But let me introduce another partner to the conference, which is the University's Network for Children in Armed Conflict. Conceived by Italian and international leading scholars and experts in international law, the network aims to promote analysis and research activities with a view to enhancing the social and legal protection of children involved in armed conflict. It has already been joined by over 45 universities and research centers of different countries from Europe, the Middle East, the Americas, and Africa including 11 from Sub-Saharan Africa and 3 from Nigeria. Among the network's goals is also to provide activities aimed at increasing awareness on this topic. And with this aim to raise awareness, and in order to celebrate the sixth anniversary of the adoption of the Safe Schools Declaration, um, the network has worked with the CPM Music Institute of Milan to celebrate uh, through a virtual concert to celebrate this declaration through the universal language of music. The protagonists of the concert that will be aired soon are young people, those to whom we trust a key role in cooperation and peace building. In connection from the stage of the CPM, theater in Milan, musicians, teachers, and students, and graduates of the institute perform. Among the artists are Sergio Vino, Marco Usida, and Paola Dalai Micieni. I thank you again for your attention. I hope you will all enjoy the concert, and I wish everybody a very successful conference. Ladies and gentlemen, Please join us in commemorating the Safe School Declaration through this concert organized by the University's Network for Children Armed Conflict in collaboration with CPM Music Institute, a member of the network. As a network of universities from all around the world with the aim of protecting children armed conflict, we cannot be insensitive to the need to ensure our minors' rights to education, especially in war zones. With this purpose, the University's Network for Children Armed Conflict collaborates with civil society organizations as well as international and national institutions. 
Therefore, allow me to welcome to Mrs. Marina Sereni, Deputy Minister of the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation. Dear members of the University's Network for Children in Armed Conflict, dear friends, I am happy to introduce this initiative. Indeed, music is a powerful instrument to convey crucial messages in a universal language. It also represents a vehicle to speak out against human rights violations and abuses, as well as to promote justice and peace. Let me take this chance to congratulate with the network. In a very short time, you became an important actor at the international level to advocate for the respect of the rights of children affected by armed conflict. Universities and research centers can be pivotal in fostering tangible positive developments on the ground for children living in war-ravaged areas. Today's project has been realized by the network together with the CPM Music Institute based in Milan and with the precious involvement of the young students from the school. I am convinced that this concert will contribute to shed light on the absolute need to protect children in armed conflict from all forms of violence and abuse and to ensure that also during conflicts they can safely go to school and learn to build a brighter future. Thank you for your attention. I thank Mrs. Marina Sereni for her insightful message. Education is life, it's our future, it's peace. It's a tool against armed conflict. Less noise than bombs, but more powerful over time. This is the message conveyed by the four songs performed by Mr. Franco Musida, Mr. Sergio Iovino, Ms. Paola Delai, and CPM musicians. I thank you all for your listening to our concert, and please enjoy it. So fragile, a dream of living in a colorful world. You don't know what tomorrow will bring. Heart by word, you can't understand. Dress in rage and cruelty. Then it's time to join us all. Take our hand, don't be afraid anymore In the sky, the hand of God We'll deliver the link to your heart We will write your future On a black wall We will take a home in your walls We are your present You will be our future So now you are saved. Dark souls, guilty of a senseless world. You are abusing a future. Take it away from your home Just let them play with your dreams So when they wake up They will say Her brother take Then it's time To join us all Take our hand Don't be afraid anymore In the sky So, so, so. 
conflict on education presents urgent humanitarian development and wider social challenges. Worldwide, schools and universities have been bombed, shelled and burned, and children, students, teachers and academics have been killed, maimed, abducted or habitually detained. Educational facilities have been used by parties in armed conflict as interalia, bases, barracks or detention centers. Such actions expose students and education personnel to harm, deny large numbers of children and students their right to education, and so deprive communities of the foundations on which to build their future. In many countries, armed conflict continues to destroy not just schools' infrastructure, but the hopes and ambitions of a whole generation of children. To tell you the story of a child One day at school I ask him Will you like to be When you grow up Do you know what I reply to me No, I buy no That means you'll be happy At 
du gehst du so zu hohe Leib, hey, du gehst du so zu heavy nicht. Let's rock, let's go for one. That means you'll be happy. Happiness is like the sun I hear the morning. Ed è bello che sia così, è già buono che sia così, è già tanto che sia così, è già tanto. È tutto vero, se è reale. È reale se puoi sentirlo nel profondo L'occasione è guardare l'universo Riflesso in ogni azione e in noi stessi Fabricatori di sogni a cui dare corpo e direzione È tutto vero, è reale Come vivere? di un sorriso ed è bello che sia così e sa buono che sia così e sa tanto che sia così e sa tanto ed è bello che sia così e sa buono che sia così e sa tanto che sia così Desiderio, metterlo al mondo, prendersi pure poi, lasciare andare, generati per generare. Siamo pigmenti colorati, contestati, siamo il più e il meno. Invisibile sostanza, di ogni nuovo arcobaleno.
So I just find excellences, distinguished guests. In our time, we all will come on here refer to our item 7. I would like to inform that in our system, according to your tables, the ushers will guide you accordingly. It's your turn. So while dinner is being served, we will all be entertained with a presentation from the cultural group. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy. Thank you. Budget appropriation for the year 2022, designed to build on the previous budget and deliver on our goals and aspirations, as this will be the last full year budget that will be implemented by this administration. I will also take this opportunity to thank you all for being here. Without further ado, for health, we have 823. 0.74 billion naira. For infrastructure, 6.45 trillion naira. Education, 1.12 trillion naira. Ah! No! Wait, wait. Who interrupts Mr. President? No! Oh, my children, my children. Uh, sorry, Mr. President. Any problem? I will take the Yes, very small. Small? 1.12 trillion naira. Yes, very small. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, you know education is a bedrock of development, sir. Yes, 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 sir. Should increase their budgetary allocation for education. I thank you most sincerely for your attention. We got the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I know we are eating, but please, can someone show me some love? <laughs> Your Excellency, Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs, Geoffrey Yama, 
Secretary, Permanent Secretary, Federal Minister of Education, Architect Sonny Cholo, Delegates here present, Members of the Diplomatic Corps, Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to deliver the vote of thanks on behalf of the Federal Government of Nigeria as we conclude the welcome reception of the fourth international conference on the Safe Schools Declaration. It is happening to note that with all of you present here, we are jointly making a bold and firm commitment towards the Safe Schools Declaration. This session may have ended, but the real task has just begun. The next two days will prove our collective result to making our schools safe and secure. As we have seen and heard, this is a battle that can be won if we all join hands to fashion out the best ways to implement the Safe School Declaration guidelines. We can achieve the noble goals and objectives of the Safe School Declaration. Yes, we can, with your continued support. To this end, we wish to express our sincere appreciation to our collaborators, the Republic of Argentina, Norway, Spain, the African Union Commission, and the Global Coalition to Protect Education from Attack. We would also like to immensely thank our friends, partners, and lovers of education who joined us virtually from around the world. Thank you for your participation and to our dear interpreters who ensured that the event was relayed in English, Arabic, French, and Spanish. We owe you a lot of gratitude. In the same vein, we thank the NGOs that have remained very supportive to our collective action the Restoration Hope Initiative, Gold Prime, Education in Emergencies Working Group in Nigeria, and many others. It is our belief that we will achieve much more together. We hope that the next two days will afford us the opportunity to share with the world our experiences in protecting education from attack and also learn from the experiences of other countries. Thank you, and God bless you.